let's look at how to create a virus in Perl. Now this can be kind of important to get an idea of how you can prevent viruses and what viruses really are. It's good to kind of know what they do and, and how they look. So let's start with um, a Linux machine. And I will use Emacs, no window. You can use whatever editor you want. I'll do virus.pl. So a Perl program starts with the shebang right here. And then you start, I want to mark the beginning and end of my virus. So I'll put a couple of things here and do virus begin. And down here somewhere I'll do virus and Okay, this is my entire virus inside of these two comments. So I'm going to do this in a couple of different steps. First, I'm going to uh, get a copy of the virus. So I have to read myself and get a copy of myself. Um, then I'm going to um, find potential victims. Should be other Perl programs. Then I'm going to um check to see if they're infected and infect them if they're not check and infect and the last step would be an optional payload thing if your virus is doing something this one's not going to do anything it's just going to spread all right so first i need to get a copy myself so my first step is to well put a copy of the virus myself i'm going to create a list called vcode that has a copy of the virus in it. It's empty right now. And I'm going to keep track of whether or not I'm, I'm actually inside the virus as I read my own code. So my um, in virus, make that a variable, in virus equals zero. So it's not a virus yet. So I'm gonna then open my file and my file is going to be, I'm going to do a file handle, and dollar zero would give me the name of my program that I'm actually running. So I open that up, you know, a while loop. So while uh, each line comes in, a line, um, and they grab it from the file handle. So while there's a line coming in, and I'm going to read that line in. So then I'm going to look at the line. I say, well, what is it? Well, if the line happens to contain the regular expression that starts with hash marks and the virus begin line, I can have the extra hashes if I want then I know that this is the beginning of the virus. And so I wanted to mark it as being inside the virus. So in virus equals one. Now, if I'm inside of the virus, I want to save whatever's in the virus in my V code variable. So if in virus, then I want to save it using the push command. So I do push and I'll push into V code the line. And close that. Now, if I get to the end of the virus, the virus end comment, I want to then say I'm outside of the virus and not collect anymore. So if the line check for this virus end, And I don't need these, but I'll put them in anyway. Then I can mark it as uh, in virus equals zero again. All right, now I have collected the virus. It's inside of V code. I should be ready to go. The next step is to close, well, actually, let's close my file handle. The next step 
should have closed, is to find potential victims. So my potential victims would be anything that ends with a .pl file extension. So my files, potential files, equals glob. Glob, we'll just do a directory listing type thing. Um, star.pl. So I want to find anything that ends in pl and put it into the my into the files list. All right. Now I want to go down here and check to see for each file in there. Is it infected? And if it's not infected, I want to infect it. So do for each file in our files list, we want to go through this nice long process of checking to see is it infected. And I'm going to start with it's a infected equals zero because we know they're not infected at first. So we don't know they are. I'm going to save the code. So my P code for the program code is this empty list. So for each one, I'm going to have a new empty list that has the code. I'm going to open the file and my file handle once again is my file. And once that file open, I'm going to do that while loop thing. So while my line equals and pull it from the file handle. So while I'm grabbing the lines, I want to check to see if the line happens to be the virus information. So if it is, so if the line happens to contain this uh, virus thing, this is virus begin, then I know that it is my virus and I should well, it is a, it's an infected file anyway. It might not be this one. It could be an infected file. It doesn't matter which one it is. I don't want to reinfect it. So I'll do infected equals one. So it's infected. And I'm going to break out a loop because I don't really need the rest of the file. And now I'm going to collect the files. So I'm going to push into my P code the line. So what this will do is it will start reading everything into P code until it reaches a begin or a virus begin. And if it reaches that, it will know that it's infected and it'll stop at that point and just break out. If the file is not infected, it will continue to load everything into P code until you have a complete copy of the entire program. And at this point, I can close my file handle and go on. All right. So now I know if it's infected. So what do we do? If it's not infected, then we want to infect it. That's kind of fun, right? So we want to uh, first create a list of lines. And then after we create a list of lines, the list of lines, we want to write the new list of lines. So what lines do we need? Well, we want to create this new variable, encode, that happens to be an empty list. We're doing a lot of lists. Huh? Okay, this empty list. Now, with this empty list, we want to check and see if the first line of the program happens to be that shebang thing we have at the beginning of every Perl program. If it is, we just want to grab it. So if the first line, so that would be P code zero, and this is a dollar sign right here. P code zero equals um, well. Let's just check with the hash mark. That's all we care about. If it has the hash mark at the beginning, we will assume it's important and we keep it just for the first line. That's it. And so we will do a push into our new code. End code. And we want to push the last or the first line from P code. The way we get that is a shift. Shift will pop off the first line of our P code and it will return that variable 
And uh, actually, I want to close that. And then send the clone right here. This will grab it. Then we're going to grab the rest of the of the virus and put the virus in there. And then after that, we're going to grab the rest of the, the P code. So for each, we won't want to do pops. We just want to grab it all. And in our V code, because we want to you know, affect multiple ones, we want to <clears throat> push into our new code um, the line that we just grabbed. And now for each, we want to grab the rest of the P code, line in. Code. We could pop it if we want, but I'm just do 4H because that's easier. I'm going to push into our end code again. Our dollar line. All right, at this point, we should have a complete copy of what we want to write to the file in our end code variable. Now we're going to write it. So we open it up, open up. Uh, my new file handle and we're going to make this a write operation and we're going to write back the same file name and we're going to do a for each and we're going to write each line from encode each line from encode and we're just going to do a print to our file handle the line as is, and then we can close the file. And that will get the file all written out and we'll be done. At this point we are, we should be infected and we can do optional payload, but we're going to skip that because we don't need to do anything. Write this out and set our permissions for a virus. So bye bye. Now, in order to see what things look like, let's create a second file, hello.pl, to make sure things work and infect properly. So do emacs w, so hello.pl, and we will create another file in Perl, and this one is just print hello world. And that's it. And we're going to now make that one executable. And we'll run it. It looks great. We're going to cat our hello world. Our hello world looks great. So now we're ready to try infecting. So we'll clear the screen. And we'll run our virus. It ran. But did it do anything? Let's cat out our hello.pl and suddenly hello.pl's contents have changed. You can see that hello.pl is now infected. You can see this line right here, the first line came from hello.pl. Then the virus got stuck in there and then the end of the virus came by and then it still kept the hello world from hello.pl. So the rest of the contents is there. And that is how you create a virus in Perl.